Hey, this is Kelly uh, here at the PNW District Championship with 20, Team 2930 Sonic Squirrels. I'm here with Kylie, Benea, Charlotte, and Tim. Uh, and they're going to be talking about their intake uh, and how it can both intake coral and algae, um, their climber, their elevator, and then how their intake can transfer to their end effector. And then all of the integration and software that goes behind it. All that and more on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual price when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details. Anymark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to anymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Uh, so with our drive base, we decided with to go with the Mark IV N, uh, so the Narrows, because we wanted to maximize the space for both the intake and the elevator, um, mainly for the elevator because we wanted to be able to have a mechanism that could go through the elevator um, to score our L2s. Um, and then also our climber, which is also very coordinated with the drive base. As you can see, it is partially um, mounted on the drive base and inspired by EveryBot, but we made it a little personalized. You can see all of the springs, um, it's very spring loaded. Uh, and this foot uh, is not with any motor, it's just controlled by the spring. So it will just go down when the arm or the climber will go up. So this just goes up. And then over here we have a ratchet. So that makes it so that it cannot fall down. So we don't have to worry about those last three seconds um, after the match. Um, so one of the important things about our width of our elevator is that we can do the handoff for our, um, or so we can uh, put the end effector through the elevator. Um, so we can do our L2s here. Um, also, with this end effector, we can do our handoff to our intake here. Uh, this uh, end effector is version three. Uh, first version was a lot heavier, had uh, big wedges in here. Uh, this new version has these really cool carbon fiber, really lightened um, space in there to hold in these wedges for the human player. So then our end effector can go in this position here and score or intake from the human player station. Cool. What kind of uh, inspiration did you take for the intake and how did you iterate over that uh, on that over the season? Uh, so this intake's actually originally um, inspired by Big Sky Robotics, Robot in Three Days, um, and the intake that one of our alumni designed, um, this uh, V shaped here, and they're going in here. Then um, later we modified it to have this top roller here. This is gonna come down here. This top roller here um, significantly improved our uh, intaking ability and then hands off here so we can score L4 really fast. Actually, our L3s are like almost sub-second now. It's crazy. Um, and then for the intake, this roller bar here, we actually have the pivot mounted lower than the top here so that if we run into the wall, it just springs up and this entire thing's like super compliant and has these springs here. So we have not had any problems with this thing breaking or any problems at all. It's really great. Awesome. Can we show some of that intaking? Sure. Awesome. All right, enabling the player. Cool. Uh, and then moving on to Charlotte to talk about the integration, all the kinds of sensors that go into the robot. So with such a complex robot comes very important integration. Um, so from the very start of the season, we make sure to communicate between our mechanical 
electrical and software teams, um, especially with our cameras. We have four cameras total. So these two are, are for the human player station and these two are for the reef. So they aim at the April tags and we CAD our cameras in on shape um, along with the rest of our robot to look at their field of views and see the exact angles that we want them pointed at and the exact locations that they're in on the robot um, to ensure that our programming team can get accurate data and get the maximum accuracy that they need. Additionally, at the start of our season, we also CAD all of our electronics because of course we have the super cool robot and we want it to work very consistently and make sure that we're very reliable. Um, and additionally, our sensors, we use CAN ranges. So you can see that we have one CAN range on the intake um, to detect when there's a game piece in the intake, of course. And then interestingly, we have two CAN ranges on our end effector. The first CAN range um, shows when the coral first enters the end effector. Um, and then the two CAN ranges together work for centering the game piece to ensure that we're getting accurate scoring consistently. Awesome. Uh, I've seen you use these two buttons down here. Uh, what are they for? So as you can see, we have a B and a Z engraved in our main breaker mount here. So this is the break mode button and the zeroing button, which makes it really simple for when we have to load our robot onto the field and when we do systems tests, just really quickly hit these buttons. And of course they're pretty vulnerable, so they disable as soon as we are um, in the match and enabled. Awesome. All right, moving on to Tim to talk about software. Yeah, so yeah, my name's Tim. I'm the chief engineer and driver for 2930. Um, let's start from the bottom up. So if I, let's see, if I bring the intake down, uh, you can see we have a can range right there, it detects whether we get a coral into the intake. Uh, once we see it, we do an automated pass off into our uh, end effector over here for scoring. Um, and actually, let's demonstrate that again. Can we get a coral over there? All right. Enabling the robot. Okay, intaking. Okay, so now it is in the optimal position to score in L3. Uh, and this is our L4 prep position. Uh, and if I press the button, you'll see it'll go to L2 there. Uh, so it automatically goes immediately to the best position for scoring. Uh, and for L L1 through L3, that's just its scoring position. For L4, we actually go to an intermediate. And then we wait until we're getting pretty close to the reef for the scoring. Um, so as far as our scoring, we actually have fully automated scoring as well. I'm going to disable. So, uh, <laughs> all right. So we have fully automated scoring. Uh, me as the driver, I just have to press the left and right trigger on our controllers. Uh, and you can see these two cameras down here are going to see the April tags, do full pose estimation. And then we actually have uh, path generation using uh, path planner lib uh, to be able to align to the reef quickly and get that scoring in. Um, and something cool about our reef cameras down here, they're kind of hard to see, but they're actually looking across each other. So it's kind of like an X pattern. Uh, and that's because in our recent years, we've noticed that uh, when you look directly on at an April tag, you get a lot of ambiguity. And uh, this more angled approach is uh, a lot more consistent for getting a robot position. Um, another thing, another challenge programming had this year was the fact that our mechanism can very easily collide with itself uh, with this top bar here and with the intake. Uh, so we have a very cool system where our uh, mechanism, which is the arm in the elevator, can tell exactly what section they're in. So like whether they're down here uh, and we want to go up here, um, they'll be able to tell, OK, am I going to collide? And if it is going to collide, it'll go to an intermediate position and make sure that it doesn't collide, uh, which is very nice for keeping the robot intact. Um, and we actually uh, do the programming for that through a state-based state -based system. So we can just tell uh, the arm and elevator what state they're in, whether that's scoring or intaking, um, and they'll automatically go to that position very quickly. Um, and another cool thing about our software is the fact that uh, we actually use Advantage Scope and Advantage Kit uh, um, to be able to simulate our robot fully. So using the, this software, we can um, have a fully simulated robot and we can actually start testing and iterating on code very early in the season before Mechanical has given us a robot. Um, and that's been really big for both uh, coding the robot and also making changes to it throughout the season. Um, lastly, I wanted to talk about our climb a little bit. Uh, so uh, 
uh, we actually have five cameras on the robot. Four of them are for April tag detection, uh, which by the way, um, these are for coral station detection for our auto. Um, but we also have a fifth one right here. And uh, if we could get the camera back uh, to our driver station over here, um, we actually have an extra monitor uh, on our driver station so that uh, I can see whether the cage is getting into our little uh, foot there um, that aligns the cage with our climber. Um, and this way we can climb very quickly and efficiently. Uh, and we've only missed like a couple climbs at this whole event. Um, so that's been nice. As far as our autonomous, we actually are trying some new stuff this year. So uh, we have this page on uh, Elastic where we can just select what starting position we want uh, and where we want to score and then we want, where we want to pick up from, whether that's the human player station or from the ground. Uh, and we can construct a whole auto uh, right before a match. So we technically have around 60 million autos, I believe was our calculated number. Uh, wow. So we're pretty flexible. Um, and also we have some preset ones uh, just so that it's less work typing in every single position every time. Um, but yeah, we actually used that in our last match and we were able to route around our alliance partners and uh, get our three piece in really consistently. Um, so yeah, that's all I had for software. Oh yeah, the climber. Yeah, let's let's see the climber. Yeah. All right, let's let's do a let's do a climb here. So I'm gonna enable the robot. All right, so if I press down on the controller, it's gonna bring the mechanism up, the intake up, and then bring the, uh, the climber out. And the climber coming out will bring the foot out as well. And the foot is that little uh, metal part that slammed down. Um, and then I'll bring the climber back in so that it's not contacting the cage. And then once I think that the cage is in our alignment system, I press it again. That brings uh, our little climbing mechanism out and then I press it one more time once we think the cage is in our system, and that'll bring it back in. And it's kind of hard to see, but there's also a little ratcheting mechanism uh, that will keep our climber from coming back out again after the match ends. Um, and that way we can get the climb every single time. Awesome. Any questions? Uh, no, that's it. All right, thank you. Thank you, Team 2930, uh, for showing us your robot. Um, I hope you do very well uh, tomorrow in your last matches uh, and in the alliance selection. Uh, you've been really consistent so far. Keep it up. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual price when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details.